Hey there folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing Halloween H2O, which happens to be my second favorite in the Halloween franchise. Uh, sometimes it changes spots with Halloween 2 1981, but it generally lies between Halloween 2 1981 and Halloween H2O. But I more, uh, I more consistently like this movie than Halloween 2. Halloween 2, when I watch it, sometimes it kind of just bothers me with some of the things like... Uh, Nick Castle's or Dick Warlock's approach to Michael Myers which I do like in and of itself but the fact that it's just so different from Nick Castle and the fact that we'll get more into that when I do my review of Halloween 2 but I generally like this more uh, this movie more consistently than Halloween 2 1981 and it if it's not always number two then it's always uh, in the top three and I know a lot of people don't agree with that but I'm gonna go ahead and give you some of my reasonings on why I think this movie is as good as I think it is, and I'm definitely aware of some of the uh, some of his problems, which we will get in. I will go with a little bit more negatives of this movie than I have in some of the other ones, just so you guys don't think I'm living on a cloud when I tell you how much I like this movie. But with all that being said, let's get into some of the bullet points that I have listed out, and the first one being the music, which you can hear just a little bit in the background. The beautiful score by John Ottman. Yes, it's not very Halloween, but this track right here, the main theme in and of itself, I think is miles better than anything that's in four five and six no disrespect to the man who uh scored all three of those which he also had a hand in in halloween three and also uh halloween two he evolved the halloween one soundtrack in halloween two i'm not the biggest fan of his work i appreciate the fact that he felt the need to change it in every movie to do something a little bit different to keep it fresh and interesting it's just none of them i really liked they never were quite the original and uh, specifically Halloween 2, I dislike the most. I like, I like, I like it the most, but I also dislike it the most because of like, when you're watching the intro and it does like this, like this muddled thing towards the end of the intro, it gets like really muddly. I don't like that. That bothers me. And I'm a ha I happen to be a big fan of movie scores in general. I'll, uh, I'll listen to the Rocky soundtrack. I'll listen to the Spider-Man soundtracks, the Captain America, Avengers, DC, all the different Batman movies. I happen to really love uh, music soundtracks so this orchestral theme I really go for I really like it I know a lot of people wouldn't agree with that because it's not Halloween but anyway moving on the story the story of this movie is a lot stronger than what people give it credit for I think it has a big advantage over some of the other Halloween movies and the fact that it's just a simple story similar to Halloween 1 similar to Halloween 2 it's a simple story a lot simpler than 4 5 and 6 well maybe not so 4 but five and six when it starts introducing things that really don't need to be there, trying to explain Michael this and that. It's got a very simple story similar to Halloween one and two, and I think that's something that this movie doesn't really get credit for. Um, it stays very close to that, which is Laurie's character. Laurie's uh, character arc, her her trauma, even though I, know I hate to use that word in the sense of the way it's looked at now with the new Halloween movies, but I think it's very, even her, even talking about her trauma, I think it's very much more well done. I prefer the effect, I prefer this version in the sense that it's connected to Halloween 2. It has more substance to it. It's been less time. It hasn't been 40 years, it's been 20 years, and more happened on that night, and she's actually related to Michael. Now, I don't prefer her to be related to Michael, but I think in this story, her, her character is much more justified than the Halloween... 2018 version of Lori, and even more so the Halloween Ends version of Lori, which I did like that movie, but the fact that her character goes back to normal after only four years when all this stuff I've already talked about. But this movie, I feel like it's just a lot stronger in the story that it tries to portray for Lori. Uh, the ideas surrounding her, the fact that we're going to jump into another thing here is the setting and the fact that it takes it out of Haddonfield, which a lot of people give it shit for. Um, and the fact that it doesn't take place in Haddonfield, and it doesn't look like it's really fall, but when people talk about the new movies, they're like, well, why isn't Lori and, why hasn't Lori and Allison left Haddonfield and this and that? Well, when they try to take it out of Haddonfield, then people have an issue with it. Of course, they could do it where Lori left Haddonfield, but maybe she comes back because Michael brings her back. They could do that. But um, in this movie, they tried to do something different. I appreciate the movie for that. I like the setting that it's in. I think it feels nice and claustrophobic, and it really leads into one of my favorite parts of the moment, which I'll, or one of my favorite parts of the movie, which I'll get into later. But we have the setting, the story, and 
one thing I want to jump into is uh, Chris Durand as the shape. Chris Durand as Michael Myers is absolutely uh, one of my favorites. Top four, top five, 100%. Better than George P. Wilbur, better than uh, Don Shanks, better than whoever the hell did it in Resurrection. I'm a big fan of Chris Durand's Michael Myers in the sense that he not only looks, not in terms of the actual mask and his overall the look of Michael, but in terms of his frame, he looks more like the original Michael Myers. He's, I believe he's six foot two, but in terms of him not being stocky like George P. Wilbur, he's not stocky like Halloween 6, he's not, he doesn't have shoulder pads like Halloween 4. Uh, Don Shanks is kind of okay, but he's a little bit more stocky than uh, Nick Castle. And I think Chris Durand overall looks more like Nick Castle. I think he moves more like Nick Castle. He's not quite there, he's not perfect. But he's a lot closer to Nick Castle's Michael Myers, in my opinion, and I think he's the closest to Nick Castle's original Michael Myers, probably other than James J. Courtney and the gentleman that played Michael in the flashback of Halloween Kills. Chris Durand is very, very much overlooked, in my opinion. I think his movements are crisp and um, fluid. I think he's not overly robotic. He's not overly slow. And he has a swiftness to him. He's not quite uh, Nick Castle, but he's just not... He's not being, like, real slow. And then I also like how... Excuse me. I like how aggressive he is in this movie because he's got a little bit more of a uh, determination. You know, this version of Michael has a motive. It's get his sister. Uh, so I think that giving him a little bit more aggression and a little bit more speed makes a little bit more sense for me. Obviously, the original version of Michael wasn't supposed to have that, but this version of Michael does have a story, does have a connection, and does sort of have a motive then him being a little bit more aggressive, I like. I prefer it than him walking slower than, I don't know, whatever walks slow, I guess. But uh, Chris Durand is the shape. I really do like him. Um, the mask is fine for me. I actually really like the K&B mask. Not the way it looks in the movie, but there's actually a specific shot of the K&B mask that I am absolutely in love with. And I actually have a shirt that has, uh, it's kind of a uh, an edited or a uh, mock-up version of that image but in the movie it doesn't look that good but uh, I also like the Winston mask I'm not the biggest fan of the hair uh, it's not what I would prefer and the fact that you can see his eyes is a little bit frustrating in some scenes but in other scenes excuse me in other scenes it doesn't really bother me so the mask the overall look of Michael I do like I like the charcoal gray coveralls I like the solid kind of charcoal or green that's what I prefer um, so Chris Durand, big fan of Chris Durand. Next up would be Laurie's character arc, which we already kind of got into a little bit. But Laurie's character arc is much stronger in this movie than I think in the entire Blumhouse trilogy. She's got a clear uh, beginning, middle, and end. At the beginning of the movie, she's running for Michael. At the end, she sort of had a little bit of change in her heart. She's sort of trying to come around and being a little bit more free with her son. And, you know, she's like, she trusts him in the sense that, okay, well, you can go to... Um, you can go camping. I forget exactly what it's called where they go, but you can go camping. I trust you. You know, you're right. I don't want to lose you. So she starts to have that turn. And at the end of the movie, when Michael finally comes, she gets scared again, right? She lets that fear kind of take her again. But then she says no. And she goes and she kicks that damn glass. She picks up that axe and she goes to whoop. She runs around the damn fucking, she runs around the school and she yells, Michael. And that, that drop right there was not intended, but I sensed it was coming. But when she screams Michael and she's looking through the school for him, it gives me goosebumps. It's probably one of the only moments, uh, one of the only moments of the entire series that still gives me heavy goosebumps. And I absolutely love it. It's good shit in my opinion. Um, that moment by itself is really what makes H2O for me. It's what, it's one of the reasons why I love this, um, this particular, uh, this specific timeline. Just cause it, it's just, uh, it's just really strong for me. And uh, it's 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 a lot better than the Blumhouse trilogy, in my opinion. Lori does not have a good character arc in the, the Blumhouse trilogy. She has a, she has an unjustified uh, characterization in 2018. And then in Kills, she's pushed to the back end or she's pushed to the, uh, um, the back burner. And then she somehow has this knowledge of Michael. She's like, oh, the more he kills, the more he transcends which I don't like, not because I don't want her to say that, or not because I don't want it to be true, but the fact, like, how the, why do you, you don't know that, 
why are you saying stuff? You don't, you don't know that. You have no reason to believe that. You don't have any knowledge that that's true. So I don't like that line coming from her. It doesn't make any sense. And I don't like it connected to Michael in general. And Halloween ends, she's completely back to normal again when worse shit has happened to her. And it's just not a fan of it. I don't try to ha I'm not trying to hate on it, but H2O is just a stronger character arc in my opinion. Uh, moving on from the character arc, uh, this kind of connects to her character arc, which obviously uh, it's a part of the movie. John John Tate. Um, uh, forget what his name is off the top of my head, but the gentleman who plays John Tate in this movie, he does a really good job. I like him in everything that I see him in. He's real good in this movie. I really like him. But his character in this movie, I really like. He's kind of like the final guy type character. Obviously, it's mostly Jamie's story, but he kind of he kind of plays into that role just a little bit when Michael starts chasing. And then, of course, you have the other three teenagers that are with him, and I think all three of them are great. All the side characters in this movie I really like. I like the idea of seeing Lori's, uh, or Jamie Lee Curtis's mother. I think she does a good job. I like um, the, the gentleman that um, plays Lori's boyfriend in the movie. I really like him. I can't remember his name. Uh, all the kids in this movie, uh, the, the main four, John Tate, uh, his girlfriend, and the other two, I really like them. And also LL Cool J in this movie, he's great. All the side characters in, the, uh, in this movie are entertaining, they're likable, you don't really wanna see them die or anything like that. I like all of the side characters in this movie. I think that's one of the strongest aspects to this movie compared to some of the other Halloween movies. I like all the side characters. Um, and then also, um, like I was talking about the, earlier, the setting. Um, I really like the fact that uh, it kind of feels more claustrophobic. It feels more, it feels more personal. And that's what really helps that moment later when Lori is yelling up and down the school for, for Michael. So I like the setting in that sense. And the ending of the movie between them, it kind of goes away from the school and it's just Michael and Lori, or I guess it ends up not being Michael, but in my head it is Michael, even though he kind, they kind of, you can tell when you watch it that they played it two ways. Chris Duran starts acting a little less like Michael and a little bit more generic. You can kind of tell, which really hurts this movie in my opinion. I like the chopping of the head. I like how um, how sudden the movie ends. I think it's really good. I like the original music coming back in at the end of the movie. I like that stinger. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by stinger, on the original track list, a lot of those uh, like shocking sounds, the shocking pieces of music are called stingers on the original uh, 1978 Halloween soundtrack. So I like the stinger when she cuts his head off and then it plays the original Halloween theme. Very classic. I like all of that. I like, I just, the ending works for me, it does. Michael doesn't quite feel like Michael. Like I said, John, uh, Chris Duran is playing it a little bit more generic to kind of um, justify the later arc, which was set up when they were making this movie. That was something that was going on. It wasn't something they came up with later. It was decided when they were making this movie. It's just not everybody knew about it. Uh, so moving on from the ending, we have um, one of the things that I'm not a big fan of this movie is the jump scares. And I, I don't like jump scares to begin with unless they're earned. Some of the jump scares that I really like are the ones that you know they're coming when you're looking around and it's got a tension filled moment and the characters are doing different things that kind of build up the tension and the suspense. And you're like, you know, a jump scare is coming. You're waiting for it. You're waiting for it. You're waiting for it and then when it hits it still gets you right. regular jump scares i'm not a fan of but in this movie they're not even actual jump scares they're fake jump scares they're just characters running into it running into each other repeatedly so i'm not a fan of that that's definitely the weakest aspect of this movie for me other than the masks changing and you know some of the other things like the halloween music not being in it um like i did say before i do like this theme but it would have been nice to have less uh scream feel feeling music um but yeah too many jump scares is one of the things that i don't like and then also the uh the face to face that's one thing that i really did like this something that i wanted to put on here the face to face when they see each other after 20 years now technically it isn't really the face to face because they do see each other previously but at that point Lori still thinks that she's seeing things but when they come together and they just save john and uh John's girlfriend, I don't remember what her name is, after the scene where, you know, Michael's trying to get in through the gate, and then they come face to face through the windows, that part, that's one of the best moments in the movie, in my opinion, it's really, really well done, uh, the fact that 
this is the first time that they're seeing each other after 20 years, eye, clo uh, eye to eye, uh, face to face. It's really, really good. Halloween 2018 had a scene similar to this when it was um, Michael looking out the window, or at least Laurie thought she, uh, he was looking out the window, so she shoots him, and really Michael was looking out the reflection, and that turned out to be Nick Castle, which is really, really cool. So it's the real Michael Myers and Laurie Strode looking at each other face to face, so that's a little bit more... Uh, really, really, really cool. So I did like the way 2018 did it, but in this movie, I like it as well. They saved it for a nice face-to-face. -face. Halloween 2018 does do it better in the sense that that is really uh, their face-to-face. -face. Well, actually, you can kind of argue that it's not because Laurie says that she sees Michael getting on the bus. So she does see a Michael before that. And then also in this movie, like I said, she Laurie sees Michael, but she's uh, she still thinks that she's um, hallucinating. So I guess they both kind of do it before they really do it, both movies. But I do like the face-to-face. -face. Like I said, I do uh, do understand a lot of the negatives in this movie. I understand that it kind of, um, it, plays in, it plays into some of the things that were popular at the time, like the scream kind of, the scream feeling horror movies, uh, having scream type music, having an orchestra for the soundtrack. I understand that it having a lot of jump scares, the mask consistently changing them, that kind of not them not being able to decide which mask, which I will say, if the Halloween Six mask wasn't used in Halloween Six, their version of the Halloween Six mask in this movie on Chris Durand looks phenomenal. It's not exactly the Halloween Six mask; it's a little bit different from what I understand than the actual Halloween Six mask. But their version of it in this movie looks really good on Chris Durand. Definitely better than it looked on, like on. Uh, on George P. Wilbur, and also, I would say it looks better than it did on Michael uh, Lerner, even though Michael Lerner does do a good job in Halloween 6. But yeah, trying to uh, trying to get the hell out of here. At the end of the day, I'm a big fan of this movie. Like I said, I understand some of the things that are wrong with it, and I'm able to still appreciate this movie. It's got a kick-ass orchestral music, which I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of soundtracks. I like Laurie's story much more in this than I do in the newer movies. I like Chris Durandis, The Shape. I like all the side characters. All the side characters are funny and enjoyable. The overall story works for me. And actually, one thing that I do want to mention before I leave is the whole 20 years later, uh, Michael's just come back out of nowhere. Before we leave, I do want to mention that I do like that. I like it because they were trying to not explain things. And that's, that's something that um, five and six don't really get right. They try to explain things. They try to do things to make it seem like, oh, what's this? You know what I mean? Um, not a fan of that. But in this movie, they kind of go a little bit too far with maybe not explaining where Michael's been. However, I enjoy it. I like it. I don't care if you explain it or, or why. I don't care if you don't explain it. If you do explain it, explain it uh, reasonably. But if you're not going to explain it, I don't care. If Michael disappears for 20 years, then I don't, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Uh, it would be kind of cool to see if they would have carried the burns over or maybe his eyes being damaged. Something like that would have been cool to see. We never really had to see that from 4, 5, and 6 with the eyes being shot out because... Uh, six used uh, really good lighting to hide the eyes, and then four and five had their their stocking bullshit. Um, but you do see Michael's eye in Halloween Five, so they didn't really carry that over. But they it would have been kind of cool to carry the uh, burns over, but do it better the way uh, do it better than four, five, and six. But getting the hell out of here, like I said, I do I do like the the fact that he's just gone. It would have been nice to see them carry over some of his injuries, but I can understand why they didn't because four, five, and six were doing it. Um, but all that being said, I'm going to get the hell out of here. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do that as well. Notification bell, all that good stuff. Down in the comments, if you want to tell me what your favorite Halloween movie is, what your favorite timeline is, what you think about this movie, let me know. All of it, I don't care. I would love to um, love to have a conversation with some of you guys. So definitely let me know down in the comments. But with all of course, until next time, true believers.